All right, in this video, I'm gonna be going over how to code a node graph. And what I've got here is a picture of some nodes. I'm gonna be showing you how to create a node itself, how to establish them in a grid-like format, and then how to connect those nodes to each other to show that we do have a viable path from, let's say, A to B, um, or from I to A, or J to R, etc. cetera. Uh, these will show that it is possible to go from one node to the next as a viable path for our algorithm. The white squares here are going to represent walls, and I'll show you how to put walls or obstructed paths that cannot be crossed by the algorithm as well. The first thing I'm going to do is create a node structure. And I'll just call that node. And for this demonstration, we're just going to be using ASCII art for our, for our algorithm. And so our nodes aren't going to need a whole lot. The first thing I'm going to do is put a bool in here to let the algorithm know whether or not a node is a wall. If it's a wall, we won't be able to cross it. The next thing we need for the algorithm is a node pointer called the parent. And the parent will be set to whatever node discovered this node in the breadth first search. And then the last thing we need is a vector of node pointers. And these are going to be the connecting nodes. Every node will be connected to the nodes around it. And so we're just gonna push those back on a vector and I'm going to call this CN to keep it short, but this stands for connected nodes. Now that we have a node structure, we can put these nodes together in a graph and I'm gonna create a class for that and call it grid. And our grid could take on any size and for that purpose, I'm going to write a constant here and I'm gonna call that size and I'm gonna set it equal to 20. And we'll use a constant instead of just hard coding the 20 so that we can just change it in one place and it will change it everywhere else in the program. We're gonna add a node pointer 2D array, and I'm just going to call this the maze, and it will be a 20 by 20. So I'm going to write size by size. The next thing we need is another node pointer. For our search, we're going to need a starting node and a target node. So we'll have a start and set that equal to null pointer, and we'll also have a target. It would also be good to set the parent up here to null pointer. And then we will need a vector of nodes, node pointers for our path. So after the breadth first search finds the path from the starting point to the target, we need to know which squares to take in order to get there. That is called the path, and we will push those back on this vector. And then the last thing we need is a grid or a map showing which nodes are pathways and which nodes are um, walls, which nodes can be traversed and which nodes cannot. But for this demonstration, I'm just going to place it right here. And I will paste this in the description below so you can copy it and use it. Now that we have all the pieces for our grid, we're going to write the constructor. And there's a lot of things that are gonna go on in the constructor here to set this up. In order to parse this string, you could just parse it as an array and that would be pretty easy. So if that comes natural to you, go ahead with that. But I'm gonna show you how you could parse it if you were reading it in from a file. So to do that, I'm going to use a string stream, which is similar to a file stream. So just come up to the top here and include stream. and we'll create a string stream in our constructor and I just call it SS. And I'm going to load in our maze. I just call this maze file because we're treating, we're treating this big string here as if it came in from a file. And then we'll put iOS in. As always, when working with a 2D array, we're gonna use a lot of nested for loops. 
So we're going to create an I loop and a J loop. Inside this nested for loop, we're going to start parsing our string stream. The first thing we need is a char buffer to hold each character. Then we're going to create a new node from our node structure. I'm just going to call that in. And then based on whatever character we have in our string stream, we're going to create either a wall or a viable path. The X's represent walls and the O's represent paths. So to read in a character, we type SS extraction operator buffer. And that takes the first character here, which would be the X and places it in the char buffer. And then we'll say if that buffer is an X, then ends is wall equals true. And by default, we will set is wall equal to false, and that will eliminate the need for an else statement down here. The next thing we're going to do is add the add this node to our maze. So maze ij equals n. And now we've set up a node based on this map and added it to our array. And once the for loop is finished, we will have all of the nodes in place. The next thing we need to do is connect the nodes that are around each other. Each node is touching four other nodes, except for the ones on the edges. So the O here is going to be connected to the X above, below, left, and right. Uh, you could also connect the diagonals if you want to, but to keep this simple, I'm only doing the horizontal and vertical connections. To connect the nodes, we're going to need another nested for loop, so let's set that up. Now this part is a little bit tricky because you have to account for the fact that you, you have nodes on the edges that are not connected to four other nodes. And if you were to try to connect this top node to the one above it, your program would crash because there's nothing there. So to handle that, I'm gonna write a few if statements that check for those conditions. So if i minus one is greater than or equal to zero, And that's basically saying, as long as I am on the second row or greater, then push back push back the node that is above it. So that would be maze I minus one J. Remember when you're working with a 2D array, you can think of this I and J as your rows and your columns. And this will take care of one rows. We're gonna need three other if statements to take care of the other borders. So I'm just gonna copy this and paste it four times and then modify it. For the second case, we're looking at I plus one. And then instead of greater than or equal to zero, we're going less than or equal to size minus one. And then we're not gonna push back the one above, we're gonna push back the one below. So this becomes I plus one and J stays the same. For the next two, we're looking at modifying J. This will be J minus one. And then we're pushing back I and then J minus one. And for our last one here, we should have J plus one less than or equal to size minus one. 
and then we're going to push back i j plus one just like that and that should take care of all four edges of the map the last thing we want to do is add a display function to show our map so that will be display maze and in this display function we're just going to go through each node in our 2d array and if that node is an open space, we're going to print a space. And if it is a wall, we're going to print a block. So it'll look similar to what we see here. To do that, we're going to need another nested for loop. And inside our nested for loop, we're going to have an if statement that checks to see if it is a wall. So if maze ij arrow is wall see out character 254 and character 254 is just a block looking ascii character and then we'll print a space and that's it for that line and then we write else see out two spaces So for walls, we print a block, and for spaces, we print a space. And then outside of the J loop, we need to step down a line. So it will print one row, and then we drop down a line, and it will print the next row. And that should display everything in our node graph. And to test this out, we will create a grid in main, and make sure you have your class public here. I forgot to do that earlier, but this class needs to be public in order for this to work. And then we will call g.displayMaze. And you should see your maze just like this. And if you want to edit it, you can go up and edit that string and it will change accordingly. Now everything is ready and set up for the breadth first search, so we'll continue with that from here.